We're back to our setup home screen. Our next step, run the next session. Our training screen appears. I'm going to go ahead and maximize this so it's easier for us to see. I then go up to the word go to begin. You notice the first window that appears says ready to start place EEG cap. Now with the discovery for training purposes you could be using either a full cap in gelling just the electrodes needed or you could literally be um, plugging in single electrodes at the top of the um, switch box. I hit OK. Ask me, initializing Z-score training. This is where I want to verify my age, eye condition, and sights are correct. I hit yes. Tells me simulations running. And I hit OK. But here what I see is I see all 19 channels listed. Mm, that's not really what we want for training purposes. Now you can do that. I'm a fan of hiding the channels not being trained. So basically it saves me from gelling up the whole head if I was doing a, using a cap. So I'm going to, in this instance, hit cancel so I can show you how to make that adjustment. As I hit cancel, it's going to take me out of the training screen back to our setup home screen. I then go back to viewer chain settings, up to data channels. And then what we're looking for here is a slightly down on the right hand side is that discovery acquisition control. Okay. At discovery acquisition we see that, ooh, look, all 19 channels are listed. We don't really want that. So what we do is we simply deselect all. And then we go ahead and we choose the sites that we want to train. And that was C3, C4, P3, P4. Our two references for linked ears and our ground. So we hit OK. We hit OK. We hit use these settings. Run the next session. Go. Ready to start. Initializing Z-scores, everything's correct again. Simulation's running. Now we notice in the background we're only seeing the four channels displayed twice that we're training. And I'll explain. So I hit OK. Up at the top were our acquisition channels. Again, C3, P3, C4, P4. As we go down, then we see them listed for training purposes. We don't see the rest of the 19 channels displaying. So again, if we were using a cap, we wouldn't have had to gel them all up. So it's much easier for a clinician to actually disregard the channels not being trained. As I scroll down, I see my events showing up. Scroll down a little farther, and I see my Z-score grid. Okay. Now as a quick summary on how the Z-score training works is this first squiggly type line in white is representing the amount of Z-scores that are fitting within the bullseye that we chose. We currently chose a plus or minus 1.2. These are the Z-scores that fall within that parameter. Okay. Now, the goal here would be to get these Z-scores above 70%. That as we get above 70% of the total Z-scores being measured, we would get feedback. Well, in this current scenario, we see we're getting no feedback at all. So what we want to do is we might need to make this bullseye a little bigger. I do that by hitting the U key, and I'm going to take it to 1.5. When I do that, I notice that my Z-scores, then the percentage that can meet that new criteria climbs up, and now I'm starting to get feedback at that 70%. Again, so I adjusted the standard deviation window with the U key. I can then also adjust the percentage of Z-scores required to meet criteria to get reward by adjusting with the C key. And now up is C, down is Shift C. 
for standard deviation adjustment. Increasing the standard deviation number is the U key. Decreasing the number is the shift U. Okay. For more in-depth Z-score explanation, you may want to watch some of the Z-score videos on the 3.4 workshop that's listed on our website. That'll give you more in-depth use of the Z-scores and some different adjustments and different features. So this is just was a quick summary on how to apply Z-score training to your Discovery 24E. And this gives you your options of also displaying all channels, displaying just training channels, which gives you then the option of using the cap or single electrodes plugged into the top of the head box. Well, hopefully that instructional video was of benefit. Keep an eye out on our website because oftentimes new videos on new topics and showing you new techniques with the BrainMaster software and hardware are oftentimes added. Till the next time, thank you very much.